completely fascinating. I actually felt like I was try trying to piece together a jigsaw from time to time. It was yeah. that, that sort of fascination, that sort of intrigue. And of course, you, you wrote it, you directed it. You've done that with pretty much all of your feature films. I wondered if, for you, writing and directing sort of merged into one role all the time, or do you have more, should we say, practical reasons for working in that way? That's a good question. Um, for me, directing is um, an extension, is, is certainly an extension of the writing process. They're very different, uh, they're very different skills, however. Uh, and really what I'm trying to do uh, as a director is <laughs> damage control. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I write these films, that's the expression, and then it's a slow process of just letting go because the world doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, you, you're trying to impose order, uh, order and vision and um, particularity to a world that just doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, the world doesn't want to be <laughs> orderly. It tends toward entropy. So, you know, it's like, this is how I saw the scene in my mind, but, um, you know, we have 10 minutes to shoot it and <laughs> the set doesn't look right. And, uh, the actor, you know, broke up with her boyfriend last night and it doesn't feel like working, you know, like it, there's a lot of, yeah, it's just a lot of damage control of trying to get what you can of that initial vision into, onto the screen. So would you ever contemplate writing a screenplay and then handing it over to somebody else to direct? Yeah, I've been, first, first of all, I've done that with my wife um, uh, a few times already little different because I'm always a producer on those films and have some input and we have a shared aesthetic in a lot of ways. So it's a little different, but um, actually, yeah, mostly I've been, uh, there were about six years between my previous film, uh, Wild Canaries and Black Bear. And in that whole time I was writing for hire and, and making a living as a screenwriter for things that I, I didn't direct. So. Um, just necessity has forced me to do that. Um, and I would do either thing. Uh, I would, I'm attached to a few things that I didn't write at the moment. Um, and I would certainly write things that I don't direct. Usually I would only do that for money though. You very often star in your own films as well, although I don't think you have in Black Bear unless you snuck in a cameo and I didn't <laughs> no. notice it. So why, why did you decide not to be in this one? Um, it was, you know, I, I acted in Wild Canaries and I thought that I was, say what you want about the movie, but I thought I was pretty funny in the movie. And I thought for sure that I would be able to have some career as an actor from it. And it never materialized. So I thought to myself, look, <laughs> if I didn't get anywhere with that performance, there's nowhere to, for me to go. Like, uh, I, I didn't feel, I felt like it just wasn't going to happen. Um, and that I was hamstringing myself in certain ways by insisting on putting myself in my films. For example, cutting myself off from funding and things like that. I mean, I had taken a big risk with Wild Canaries because um, there were production companies interested in producing it, but they weren't interested in uh, Sophia and I being the leads. Um, so, and, and I, all, I told them all no, and I insisted on being the lead. I had to raise the money privately. And um, it was a lot of sacrifice and it, it didn't go the way that I, I thought it was going to go, at least for my career in terms of acting. So I just kind of threw in the towel and devoted myself more fully to writing. And um, it turned out to be a good decision because I feel like I made a lot of progress and I've been able to make a living and, um, and I've been able to make 
in the case of Black Bear, the film I want, and more people saw it. So um, I have no intention of going back to acting ever again. I, I don't miss it. I, I never think about it. And it's just a, a, a ship that sailed. And you obviously made the right decision. I, I wondered what inspired the story for, for Black Bear. I mean, is it, is it actually based on any of your own experiences? I, I feel reluctant to ask if it's based on any productions that you've been on, given what we actually <laughs> see in the film. Um, yeah, I'd say it's entirely based on experiences that I've had, though it isn't directly autobiographical. I don't think I could have written the film if I hadn't spent the previous 15 years on film sets um, and making films with my wife. So yeah, I think, Mike's, and I was also very much reflecting on that experience because um, I had been so busy basically for 15 years. Um, first, I was trying to make it as a writer, director, and an actor. I was also trying to support my wife in her quest to do the same. Um, we also had to make a living, so often had day jobs. And then finally moved to LA and I started working as a screenwriter and um, when I had enough money saved up, I, I took a break and I thought, okay, now it's time to write your next film for yourself to direct. And I realized I hadn't taken a second to reflect on those years because I had been so busy, like trying to make it. So in a way, Black Bear was um, a time for me to reflect on uh, my life in film. And um, that's also what the character, the protagonist of the film is doing. So, um, yeah. And it, it is a very intricate film. I wondered if, if you would describe it as maybe um, a psychological drama or a, a thriller or something with elements of horror, or, you know, would you categorize it in any one way like that? Um, I think all the things that you said are, are true of it, um, but it would be hard to pick which one. I guess, first of all, it's an art film. Um, it was, it was um, done in the tradition. I'd been working a lot on more mainstream projects that have more conventional story structure. And this was more drawing from European influences and um, you know, just sort of the classics of foreign cinema, you know, Bergman, mm -hmm. Fellini, people like that. Um, so I think of it as an art film. And, um, but I guess technically you would call it a, a psychological drama. And you've got Aubrey Plaza in the role, who's absolutely terrific in the lead. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And of course, we usually associate her with, with comedy and a particular sort of deadpan style of comedy. Yeah. I wondered why you chose her for the, for the main part. Well, I wanted to work with all of the three actors. They were really the people that I imagined in the roles uh, while I was writing it even. But I didn't know Chris and I didn't know Sarah. So I couldn't really draw... Um, from their personalities, it was more of a visual thing. With Aubrey, I knew her and I also knew her persona and I knew the difference. And, um, you know, on the surface, there's a sarcasm, there's uh, an, enig an enigmatic quality. Um, but I think those things belie uh, a lot of inner depth and turmoil. So. Um, and that, that I didn't think we'd seen her bring to the screen. So uh, I thought it would be, I thought it would be interesting to, to play with her persona and show um, the deeper things beneath it. And um, I also thought at that time um, that she was interested in a challenge and doing something different. And um, so, so that was, you know, that was exciting too. So she was always your first choice then? There was never really anybody else in your mind? No, I mean, no. If she said no, I suppose I would have tried to find someone else, sure. but, but it, it worked out. Sure. And 
Christopher Abbott, who you've mentioned as well, I always think he's a bit of a hidden gem as, a, as an actor, although we've been seeing a lot more of him recently. Mm -hmm. What was it about him that made him so right for his part? You know, it wasn't intellectual. I just, I had seen him in a lot of movies. And uh, in particular, I was struck by his performance in a movie called James White. I saw and, that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's been good in a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that was the one that was like, oh, wow, this, this guy might be the best actor of his generation. Yeah. So um, it was really a, an honor and a privilege to work with him. And uh, he did not let me down. No, he, he definitely didn't. He's, he's yeah. really good. I mean, all, all three of them are really. I, I think you've, yeah. you've really chosen well in terms of your, your three leads. And they have such chemistry together, the three of them, which is difficult mm -hmm. to achieve with three. Two is perhaps a, a bit easier, but three. Yeah. Did, did that prove to be a challenge for you or for them? Even? I don't know if it was a challenge for them. If they did, they didn't share that with me. Um, you know, on every set, there are tense moments between all of the stakeholders. Uh, but no, it was, it, it was actually not, never, uh, never a problem. I think our time is up, unfortunately, but really okay. appreciate you taking the time for, for a chat. Um, I appreciate you, to to you giving me the time. And uh, thank you so much for a very intriguing film. I love a bit of mental gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frida. I appreciate it. Thank you.